By the late 1950s, Americans were in love with customizing their cars and the hot rod culture. Lowered cars with custom paint jobs and pinstriping, increasing performance, drag racing, and magazines like Hot Rod brought the culture up and down Main Street. In this environment, Goodyear proposed the next big thing. Glowing, colored tires that could match the car or your wife's outfit. Ten years later, they gave up without selling a single one. Welcome back to All Cars, y'all. If you're new here, I am John, and this is a far too brief history of Goodyear's illuminated tires. Goodyear has a long history of research and innovation, from providing tires to the Model T to introducing the all-weather tire in 1908, airplane tires, and tires for the Lunar Rover. Their research department led the development of plastics, foam, hoses, latex, and even parts of the early artificial hearts built with the Cleveland Clinic. It was this polymer research that in the late 1950s led two Goodyear chemists, William Larson and Anthony Finelli, to experiment with polyurethane and create an exciting new product, neothane. Polyurethane should be familiar to you. You can buy cans of it at the hardware store, and its derivatives can be used to create products you may not be familiar with, like spandex, or in automotive history, a version was used to create the plastic body panels for the Pontiac Fiero. Neothane offered several intriguing benefits. Traditional tires are expensive and complex to produce, with multiple layers of fibers and rubber needed to be combined and at high temperatures. Neothane combined plastic and rubber characteristics and was much simpler to manufacture, being poured into a mold with only 250 degrees Fahrenheit needed and creating a tubeless, cordless tire. Goodyear also bragged offered outstanding resistance to abrasive wear, chipping, cutting, and tearing. One other exciting property of it was that it was translucent. Goodyear realized they could add dye to the tires and did so with bright colors like green, yellow, orange, and blue, and could mount them on rims with 18 small light bulbs inside, creating a vivid glow at night. Power for the bulbs was provided via a wire from the wheel arch to a ring on the hubcap. Goodyear was excited for the new synthetic rubber and its potential. John J. Hartz, Goodyear's development manager, bragged in 1962 that it was one of, quote, the most dramatic tire developments in the history of the industry, and they envisioned a day when families would own multiple sets of tires to change them out quickly. He said, quote, Goodyear's translucent tire can be produced in any color to match the car or perhaps the wife's new outfit. Someday a wife may tell a husband, Charlie, go out and change the tires. I'm wearing my blue dress tonight. In a 1961 press release, the company predicted cars as fashion. Quote, Once the tires reach the market, and that could happen in a few years, auto stylists may use them to carry out a car's color scheme, perhaps matching the tires with the upholstery. And it's not at all unlikely that Milady will want tires to enhance her wardrobe, her hair, or even her eyes. Imagine, if you will, one girl telling another, but my dear, green tires just don't do a thing for your complexion. When that day comes, it will mean a whole new frontier for the tire designer. In 1960, Goodyear was testing their product out, believing that the new tires would wear better than ordinary rubber, while allowing control of the light level from inside the car, including syncing it with turn signals, the brakes, or being able to turn them on in fog. Gauging public interest, they put a set on a Dodge Polara in Miami and a Chrysler 300 in Manhattan. Reaction wasn't exactly what they expected. In a Life magazine from December 5, 1960, an article pointed out that other motorists ran lights or just stopped to stare. Obviously, we don't have light-up colored tires today, so what happened? Well... First, Goodyear's chemists and engineers couldn't overcome the challenges of the material. Simply put, the tires didn't do the basics of being a tire very well. Under perfect and dry conditions, they were fine, but performed poorly in any kind of wet conditions. Second, low temperature that was used to create them meant that under even modest braking, the tires started to melt. Third, the power connection to the light bulbs tended to spark when it wore out, leading to fire concerns for both the car or the surrounding environment. Fourth, the tires were extremely heavy, estimated to be 150 pounds per tire. 
For comparison, a modern Goodyear Assurance Weather Ready 205, 65, or 16 that would fit my car weighs just 23 pounds. The Neothene tires would be comparable in weight to a semi's tire. So much for them being easy and quickly exchanged on a whim to match your wife's dress. Fifth, the simple act of driving covered the tires in dust and grime, at best making them dingy and negating the entire point of the tires. Finally, they were going to be expensive. We don't know what Goodyear would have charged for them, but we know it was obviously more than they thought people were going to be willing to spend for the novelty of the whole thing. So after 10 years of development, Goodyear quietly killed the project, and it's not even mentioned in their history on the corporate website. But that wasn't the last we heard of them. In 1958, the famous Jim Skanzakis commissioned George Barris, who later designed the Batmobile for the 1960s TV show, to create the Golden Sahara II concept car based on a wrecked 1953 Lincoln Capri's chassis. Jim spent $75,000 or about $834,000 today, and the result had gold paint with pulverized fish scales, a TV, a tape deck, a non-working telephone, a cocktail bar in the back for those long drives home after work, but also extremely futuristic amenities like remote start, a standard steering wheel, as well as a unitrol stick that mimicked airplane controls and that controlled steering, acceleration, and braking, and a primitive version of sensor-guided automatic braking. Goodyear agreed to supply Barris with their light-up tires, and they were referred to as the glass slippers for the car. After touring the country for six years, the Golden Sahara II went into Jim's personal collection until it was sold at auction in unrestored condition in 2018 for $385,000. During the restoration, Goodyear recreated a set of neothane tires, but this time they were solid and useful only for low speeds. Car customizing is still going strong today. Manufacturers will put puddle lights on mirrors. They'll have light shows when you start your car. And of course, you can see cars going down the road with under chassis lighting. For a product that garnered so much attention over 50 years ago, the time feels right for someone to recreate this concept, even if it's a low volume, luxury priced tire product. With modern polymer science and efficient LEDs, I could see this becoming a fad again. Thanks so much for being here, and thanks especially to my patrons who make videos like this possible. If you liked the video, well, there is a button for that down below, and if you think I've earned it, please hit that subscribe button to see more videos just like this. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me, y'all.